This is a really crazy flashlight. This is a compact, high output, actively cooled flashlight from Wubin called the X1. And this is something really unique, which I wanted to review just because it was so different. Um, but the result is a flashlight that I think is actually executed super well. It's very functional, the performance is very good, the build quality is great, and it's just really unique, and I like it a lot for that. Now there's really two main interesting things about the X1. The first is this interesting design, and the other is the performance, which is very good. So speaking of the design, this flashlight is a dual 21700 cell light in this rectangular form factor. So up here at the head, we have three Cree XHP70.3 LEDs um, in this horizontal pattern, and we'll talk about that more in a bit. Up here on the front, of course, we just have the button like you'd expect, and then to either side of that are the ports for the cooling system. So there's a fan here, and it blows air through this heat sink and out the other side, and that keeps the light cool on turbo. And then just below that, we have this USB-C charging port. Now, obviously, the main interesting thing about this flashlight is the fact that it's rectangular shaped. Personally, I'm a really big fan of rectangular or square shaped flashlights. I just think they're really cool, and they have some fun advantages, like obviously this thing doesn't roll at all, which is cool. Uh, but this light in particular, the X1, is just really compact. So it's over 11,000 lumens, which is super bright. And of course it has those three LEDs and two batteries. And pretty much a format that's about as compact as it can get. This is actually really easy and comfortable to hold in the hand. It is pocketable, it's a bit large for a pocket, but you can do it. This is a really good form factor for like carrying in a backpack or something. So I really like it for that. Of course this light does have a micro arc finish, which gives it this really cool white matte texture. It's a very clean aesthetic. It's one that's become pretty popular. I'm a big fan of it. Um, this finish is supposed to be more durable than hard anodizing, and it seems like they've done a good job applying it on this particular light. I haven't really noticed any scratches or major discoloration, but it is also available in just a standard black hard anodized version if you prefer that. The only real complaints I have about this design are the USB-C port. I'm just not really a fan of this rubber cover. The other X lights, I reviewed the X0 recently, I just in a short, and that light has the same system that the X1 has, which is kind of like this metal flap that covers both the button and the port. And that's unique. I think it's kind of cool. I don't know if it's really functionally better than this, but it would have been kind of cool to see something like that here instead of just this rubber cover. But whatever. Um, and then the button on this light. One advantage of this being rectangular is this button's really easy to find and it's actually quite easy to use. It's just not the nicest button. It's a bit mushy, but you know, not a big deal. It's okay. So the performance of this guy is excellent. It's very good. Three XHP 70s, 11,000 lumens. The dryer that it's using has really good regulation. So when we look at the output graphs, the runtime graphs, we see we start at just over 11,000 lumens which runs for about 45, 50 seconds. And then it drops down to a sustained level of 2700, which runs for another 115 minutes, a little bit longer on high. Regulation is excellent across the board, totally flat, nice long run times. So I'm pleased to say that the performance here is very good, especially for something so compact. Now the thermals are also very interesting. So again, we have this fan here on the side that blows air straight through the flashlight, just like that. Uh, and out the other side here where you can actually see the heat sink poking through. Now this fan is intelligently controlled so it'll only turn on once the flashlight reaches a certain internal temperature and it'll just run until the light is cool. And it actually does a really good job. This light, it does get hot, but it's pretty reasonable. It never gets too hot to hold in my opinion. And again, as you can see in the runtime graphs, it's able to sustain its output really well. So good job there. Uh, the only disadvantage to this system is that when you turn the light off, for some reason, the fan also turns off which isn't the greatest because it means that it's not actively cooling unless the light is on, um, but it's not too big a deal because it never heats up too badly in the first place, so it's all right. Now, one thing I wanna say, you know, this has got three XHP70s. I've got another light over here. This is the Lumintop GT3 Pro. This also has three XHP70s. This flashlight right here is substantially brighter. It's also got twice as many uh, 21700s in it. It's got four. This thing though gets way hotter than the Wubin X1 does. And as you can see, there's a dramatic size difference there. Sure, they probably could have pushed more output out of this thing, but I actually think it's in a zone where it, it makes just the right amount of sense. It's still super bright at night. This thing really is crazy bright, but it manages its heat very well and it offers nice long run times. So I actually think they found a really good balance with this, this particular design. The fan is also not too loud 
and the light is still waterproof even with the fan, which is really awesome, that's great to see. Now, of course, one potential issue with having a fan in a flashlight or any moving part is durability, longevity concerns. Um, of course, it's exposed, so you could get dirt and gunk in there over time, and potentially the fan bearings could even down the road wear out and you might have to replace them. Uh, Wubin does not include a replacement fan in the box. I think you can buy one from them, I'm not sure. The thing is there are screws around here, so potentially you can disassemble it and replace that fan or at least clean it out, which is nice. But that kind of leads us to the other issue with this flashlight, which is the batteries. So this has two 21700s, and like so many brands have been doing lately, they did not decide to make these easily replaceable. It even says on the bottom, do not disassemble. Now, there are four screws here, which, I mean, theoretically, you could still just disassemble it and replace the batteries. I think they're Loctited, though. I couldn't actually remove the screws myself. Uh, maybe your mileage will vary, but one way or the other, they don't want you taking this apart, which is a real bummer. You can contrast that to the Illumintop Rattlesnake that I also recently reviewed, which has a very similar setup to internal 21700s, but you can actually unscrew the back of that light and swap them out relatively easily. And sure, I, I think it's fine to have a system where the batteries are screwed in and you have to take these screws out to remove them, that, you know, whatever. But the fact that you can't replace that is a really big issue for me. And that's the main thing that's preventing me from keeping this flashlight for myself, because I really, really like it, but for that fact. So Wubin, I would say this is an excellent flashlight overall. I would just ask that you make this easily serviceable so that those batteries can be quickly replaced, or at least replaced at all. Now, as for the beam quality of this guy, it is low CRI, cool white emitters, so nothing too crazy there. Um, but it is also in that zone where it's just crazy bright, so it just feels like daylight when you turn it on. It, it really is awesome at night. Um, the, these are big floody emitters, so it's not a very throwy light. And because they are oriented like this, kind of in a line, um, it produces a beam that definitely has kind of like a, an elongated ellipse shape. So I actually think that's really cool. It makes for like a really nice horizontal beam pattern that doesn't really waste any light above and below the area you're illuminating. And the floody nature of these LEDs removes any major notable artifacts. So the beam is nice. It's just kind of a wall of light type of deal. And again, I think it's really fun, really cool to use at night. I feel like I say that a lot. It's kind of lost its meaning at this point, but all of these flashlights we've been reviewing are super cool. They're super awesome. And this honestly has been one of my very favorite of the bunch. Do I recommend the X1? Yes, I do. I think it's a really awesome flashlight. I think you will enjoy it a lot if you pick one up. This guy runs for $200, which is Again, expensive, but I actually think that's really well justified in this case. Great build quality, great driver in here for solid performance. It's just a really nice, unique design. Yeah, and really my only complaint about this is going to be that battery situation. If you care about replaceable batteries, and truthfully I think you should, then that's gonna be a major hang up. So admittedly I'm a little bit on the fence because I, I think it's an awesome flashlight. And I do know realistically most people honestly don't care that much about the battery thing, but it's an issue. So really that's kind of the main thing. What I would say to Wubin about this light is, one, if you could put like high CRI, uh, 70.3 highs or FC40s in here, that would be really cool. But regardless, I really think they should make the batteries easily replaceable on this light. So that's really all I have to say about this light. Honestly, I think it kind of speaks for itself. It's a super cool design. So if you're interested in this guy, we're going to have a link down in the description, probably a coupon code um, and yeah, that's really all I have to say about this one. So, thanks for watching.